Level zero. You walk outside. The sky is clear. The sun blazes overhead like it always does. Birds chirp. Shadows fall in neat, familiar angles. And then, nothing happens. This is a non-eclipse. Because even though eclipses are majestic and dramatic, they're rare. The moon's orbit is tilted about 5 degrees compared to Earth's orbit around the sun. That means most of the time when the moon passes between Earth and the sun, it's either too high or too low in the sky to cause an eclipse. So 99% of new moons, they just pass by. No drama, no spectacle, just space doing its thing, invisibly. But without level zero, we wouldn't appreciate what follows. Because eclipses only happen when the orbits align, and when they do, they rewrite the sky. Level 1. It starts with a tiny nibble. Like the sun is being bitten by something small, dark, and silent. This is a partial solar eclipse, the most common type. The moon moves in front of the sun, but not perfectly centered. It only covers part of the sun's disk, leaving a crescent of blinding fire exposed. The shape varies. Sometimes it's just a sliver, sometimes half, occasionally almost full. It depends on where you're standing on Earth and how deep into the moon's shadow you are. But here's the thing, even 90% coverage still means daylight. Your eyes won't tell you something cosmic is happening unless you're using special eclipse glasses. Only when the moon covers more than 95% of the sun does the sky begin to dim. The temperature drops slightly, shadows sharpen, animals may pause, and people, they look up because something feels off. Partial eclipses happen about once a year somewhere on Earth. They don't black out the sun, but they remind us the moon's still up there, casting shadows sharper than we ever feel. Always use eclipse glasses or indirect viewing methods during a partial eclipse. Looking directly at even a sliver of the sun can permanently damage your retinas. Level 2. The moon doesn't just block the sun, it rings it. This is an annular eclipse a rare phenomenon that creates the unforgettable ring of fire. Here's why. The moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle. It's elliptical, meaning its distance from Earth varies. At its farthest, apogee, the moon appears smaller in the sky. So when a new moon passes directly in front of the sun, but it's too far away to cover it completely, it leaves a thin, fiery halo. That's the annulus, a perfect searing outline of the solar disk. You're standing in the Antumbra, a region where the moon is centered but too small to cause totality. Annular eclipses are stunning but dangerous, because even though the sun looks covered, it's not safe to view without protection. That blazing ring is still intense solar radiation. The 2023 annular eclipse across the U.S. Southwest drew millions of viewers. For just a few minutes, cities plunged into a surreal twilight, not dark, not bright, but something in between. Annular eclipses happen once every one to two years, but in narrow bands. To experience one, you often have to chase them across deserts, jungles, oceans, but they're worth it. Level three, you're standing outside, it's midday, but the light changes. It fades, soft at first, then more quickly, shadows go sharp and colors wash out. Then, darkness. Day turns to night. This is a total solar eclipse, the rarest and most dramatic eclipse visible from Earth. And it's caused by perfect symmetry. The sun is 400 times wider than the moon, but the moon is 400 times closer. That means from Earth's surface, they appear almost exactly the same size. When the moon's closer to Earth and directly aligned, it covers the entire sun. The sky goes black, stars emerge, Temperatures can drop 10 degrees Celsius in minutes, and the most magical thing of all appears, the corona, the sun's outer atmosphere, a halo of plasma stretching millions of kilometers, normally invisible. Birds roost, animals panic, humans cheer, cry, fall silent. The path of totality is narrow, just 100 to 160 kilometers wide, and moves across Earth at over 1,600 kilometers per hour. Most people never experience a total eclipse in their lifetime, but those who do, they never forget. The next total solar eclipse over North America is in 2026 and 2027. Plan ahead, traffic jams, packed hotels, and booked out campgrounds are the norm. But totality lasts only minutes, and it's worth every second. 
Level 4. It's an eclipse, but also not. The sky dims strangely. The light behaves like something's almost happening, but never fully commits. This is a hybrid eclipse, the rarest solar eclipse of them all. It's also called an annular total eclipse, and it's a celestial magic trick. Depending on where you stand along the path, the eclipse can appear annular or total. The moon's shadow is curved because of Earth's roundness and the moon's elliptical orbit. At some points along the path, the moon appears large enough to cause totality. At others, usually near sunrise or sunset, it appears slightly smaller, leaving a ring of fire. So one eclipse can shift forms along its path. Only about 3 to 5% of all solar eclipses are hybrids. They're incredibly rare. Fewer than 10 will occur this century. Observers on land rarely experience both phases because the transition usually happens over open ocean. But in 2005, a hybrid eclipse was visible across parts of Central America and Africa, and both phenomena were recorded in different regions. Fun fact, the next hybrid solar eclipse will occur in 2031 and won't happen again until 2049. Hybrid eclipses reveal how orbital geometry isn't static. It flexes across Earth's surface. Tracking these shifts helps astronomers refine models of the Moon's shape and Earth's curvature. Level 5. The sky is black. The Sun is eclipsed. But something's off. It's not the Moon doing it. It's something else. This is a transient solar occultation, a rare, often brief event where something other than the Moon blocks the Sun. Sounds impossible? Not quite. In 2014, NASA recorded the International Space Station crossing the Sun during a partial eclipse. The silhouette of the ISS was visible for just 0.9 seconds, layered over the already shifting crescent Sun. In other cases, large asteroids have passed near Earth and briefly crossed the solar disk from some observers' view, and even high-altitude aircraft or balloons, when carefully tracked, can momentarily block solar rays, though these aren't true eclipses in the astronomical sense. Some astronomers even use artificial eclipses in labs. Tiny metal disks called coronagraphs that block out the sun to study its corona, mimicking an eternal eclipse. These aren't natural events in the traditional sense, but they reveal something else, how much we crave control over cosmic phenomena. Artificial eclipses, like coronagraphs aboard the SOHO and STEREO missions, have helped discover over 4,000 comets by blocking the sun's light. Sometimes, to see what matters most, you have to create the darkness yourself. Level 6. The moon's silhouette is razor-sharp. The corona blazes white-hot. But something's off. It lasts far longer than usual. Two minutes, three, four, nearly eight. You're watching a long-duration total eclipse, the rarest subtype of the classic total eclipse. Why so long? Everything aligns just right. The moon is unusually close to Earth, perigee. Earth is near aphelion, farthest from the Sun. The eclipse path crosses near the equator, where Earth's rotation adds extra seconds. The longest total eclipse of the 21st century happened on July 22, 2009, lasting up to 6 minutes and 39 seconds. But theoretically, totality could stretch up to 7 minutes and 32 seconds. After that, geometry says no. These are cosmic coincidences too much or too little of any factor, and the darkness snaps short. Scientists model these eclipses centuries in advance, valuable for corona studies and solar wind analysis, because when the sun hides for that long, secrets spill. Level 7. You're flying 50,000 feet above Earth, outside the window, darkness at noon. Not just any eclipse, this is an eclipse from the stratosphere. NASA does this. Tourists can too, if you have the money. Why bother? Because at high altitudes, the atmosphere is thin. No haze, no light pollution, no clouds. It's eclipse viewing in Ultra HD. Better yet, airplanes can chase the eclipse shadow, stretching the duration of totality by flying in sync with it. In 1973, scientists aboard a Concorde jet followed an eclipse over Africa for 74 minutes, more than 10 times longer than anyone on the ground. They studied solar flares, coronal mass ejections, and magnetic loops in unprecedented detail. From up here, you're not just watching, 
you're witnessing the sun like Earth almost never sees it, raw, exposed, and alive. Level 8. You're standing on a planet not called Earth. Two moons orbit overhead. One crosses in front of the sun, then the other. This is a dual satellite eclipse, a speculative event that could occur on exoplanets with multiple large moons. We haven't seen one, but physics says it's possible. Picture this. A rocky world, Earth-sized. Two moons in synchronized orbits, both capable of producing total eclipses. One moon begins to block the sun, casting a total shadow. Seconds later, the second moon moves in, covering what remains. Double totality, a cosmic encore. Or imagine this. A partial eclipse becomes full, then partial again, all in the span of a minute. A celestial choreography between siblings in orbit. It hasn't happened in our skies, but Pluto and Charon come close. A binary system where both bodies are tidally locked, forever facing each other. Some astronomers believe this setup may lead to unusual shadowing interactions, even if not full eclipses as we know them. Now scale that up. With bigger moons, a closer star, and the right orbital rhythm, in a universe of 100 billion galaxies, the odds don't just allow it, they demand it. Because if it can happen, somewhere it already has. Level 9. The eclipse starts normally, then it stops. Not gradually, instantly. The moon jerks backward, the sun flares, you blink. It's a temporal eclipse, speculative of course, where space-time itself distorts the event. How? Hypothetically, by a gravitational wave. A powerful enough wave passing through Earth could stretch or compress space-time in real time. If that wave coincides with a solar eclipse, observers could witness temporal distortions, the eclipse shadow slowing down, sudden jumps in position, totality snapping off prematurely. We've never observed this. But the LIGO experiment has detected gravitational waves from colliding black holes. So the concept is grounded in real physics. In this model, eclipses become clocks. And if the cosmos nudges the gears, time skips. Level 10. It's noon. The sky is clear. The sun blazes overhead. Then, black. No moon, no warning, just sudden, absolute darkness. This isn't an eclipse caused by nature. This is a megastructure eclipse, speculative, terrifying, and rooted in serious astrophysics. Not a shadow, a signature. Imagine this, a Dyson swarm orbiting a star, harvesting its energy, blocking light in geometric patterns. A planet-sized alien construct drifting across the solar disk. A directed solar mirror blotting the sun on purpose. In 2015, astronomers detected bizarre dimming patterns from KIC 8462852, also known as Tabby's star. The light dropped by 22%, far more than a planet transit. No known natural cause explained it. For a moment, scientists wondered, was it an alien structure? We haven't found proof, but the idea didn't die. If you looked up one day and saw the sun vanish with no moon nearby, ask yourself, what did the sun move behind? Or worse, what moved in front of it? Because not all eclipses are made by nature. Some might be made on purpose. Level 11. You check the sky. The forecast is clear. No clouds, no storms. And yet, the sun is gone. No flicker, no flare, just absence. No sunlight, no warmth. Your skin goes cold. Satellites lose signal. Plants begin to curl. Infrared cameras show nothing. This is no ordinary eclipse. This is a null eclipse. Theoretical, unexplained, and unlike anything we've ever recorded. Not caused by the moon, not by any planet, object, or shadow. It's as if the sun itself was erased, not hidden, but folded out of our dimension. One theory, a stellar cloaking device, used by hyper-advanced civilizations to hide stars from observation. A Dyson sphere built not to harness light, but to mute it completely. Another, a cosmic rendering error, reality itself skipping a frame, like the universe forgot to draw the sun. Or worse, something has entered the solar system, something massive, dense, silent, and whatever it is, it doesn't reflect light, it devours it. The null eclipse wouldn't have a corona, no crescent, no diamond ring, just a sky that should shine and doesn't. Not an eclipse, a cosmic redaction, 
If one day the sun blinked out, no warning, no shadow, what's the first thing you'd do? Drop it in the comments. I want to see how humanity responds when the light goes off. See you in the next video.